between 20 million and 36 million. That's the estimated number of people enslaved worldwide right now. Modern day slavery can be found on every continent. The stories of the survivors are painful, shocking, and sometimes hard to hear. On this farm, we find Abdul. He survived three years of work. He's just 10. He earns no wages for his work, he says. Durgawati is the mother of three. Her eldest daughter should not be this skilled at brick making. She is only five years old. The International Labour Organization says human trafficking is a $150 billion a year industry. Unraveling the human criminal enterprises involved is vital in putting a stop to it. When I see Westerners in the red light district, I know that they are buying flesh. If no one patronize that, and if no Westerner go to that area, there's no business for traffickers in the Philippines. I can't imagine what it feels like to have your mother sell you, to have your mother waiting in the car while she gets money for you to be raped. How can that feel to a kid? It's not she was stolen from her mother. Her mother gave the keys to the people to rape her. Celebrities like Manny Pacquiao are speaking up to make a change. I believe that we can end human trafficking in our lifetime. The challenge for us is to make this impact sustainable. Top chocolate maker Nestle vows to end child labor on cocoa plantations. We will work with the World Cocoa Foundation and build schools. We work with the International Cocoa Initiative. Goodweave USA is trying to put an end to child labor in rug factories by putting the Goodweave seal of approval on handmade rugs. Not only does it mean that the product is child labor free, and not only does it mean that the place where that rug was made was inspected, but it also means a percentage of the purchase price is educating children. Through the Do Something Now campaign, thousands of Christian students come together each year, donating their own money. They've raised millions of dollars for charities who fight human trafficking and care for survivors. It's great to see that once someone is willing to stand up, everyone is happy to follow. Well, since we started the CNN Freedom Project, we've seen many people stand up to help those held in slavery. Today, we're renewing our commitment to do our part. Well, joining me now, CNN International Executive Vice President, Tony Maddox. Thanks, Tony. I mean, I think the Freedom Pro Project has become very much part of CNN's DNA. Why did we, why did we get involved? Why did we start it? Because you've got to bear in mind that four years ago, this subject was not as front of mind as it is now. And it was one of those things where most people, if you say, you know, slavery, it was taught, we were taught about at school. And if you're in the U.S., it was about the importation into slaves. If you're in the U.K. or if you're in Africa, it was about people being sold from the country or, or, the, or the U.K. trading slaves. And it was all very much back in history. And it's only when you start to look at some of the, some, some of the statistics, and of course the statistics are all over the place, but whatever, whichever number you take, the problem is massive. It's huge. It's bigger now than it's ever been. And we felt that CNN was uniquely well-placed amongst news organizations to do something about that because we're spread all around the world. We have viewers all around the world, and this is very much a global problem. So by connecting the world in the way in which we do, we could actually connect together the different strands of this problem. And so what are we doing now? What's the reset about? I mean, where are we going on this project? I think it's very important to keep energy alive on these projects. One of the things I noticed when we got this project launched was just the huge levels of participation. We had some staff meetings about it, and literally it was standing room only. And still to this day, everybody's very, very keen to be involved. But you've got to keep refreshing programs as well. You don't want people to get bored or think, oh yeah, I know they do the Freedom Project. You've got to look for new stories, new ways of moving it forward. We've got a great documentary coming up. We've got some fantastic new reporting coming up. In a way, it's depressing because the problem hasn't gone away. In some ways, the problem has gotten worse. But what has changed is I do think there has been a big increase in recognition of the scale of the problem and the size of the problem in the past four years. Not entirely down to us. I would never be so arrogant as to think that. But certainly there has been a widespread pickup on this discussion now that there wasn't there before. 
the, the issue of modern day slavery becomes part of conversation. Tell us, you know, in terms of the stories of my colleagues as well, I mean, many of them have stood out. What for you do you, f do you feel, which reporting do you feel has really made a difference? Well, I always think with all reporters, when we talk about doing a story, if you say there's a million people involved, it means nothing. I think the shot that you had in that piece of the five-year-old girl making bricks, I think it was important in a number of different ways. People tend to assume that the human trafficking and slavery is associated with the sex trade. And that's true to a large extent. That is the bulk of the business in this. But there are other so kinds of slavery as well. Indentured labor, um, people who are effectively sold as laborers for their lives with the debts, that, you know, tiny little debts that they're never ever going to be get able to get out of. Um, the Sarah Seidner piece in India in the brickmaking factory really stood out for me. I was very proud of the documentary that we did in the Philippines, which of course is ground zero in the sex trafficking problem. Um, that always was very powerful. And, and, and we made real progress, I think, with the cocoa agreement and getting the chocolate companies to realize, which many of them didn't, just how abused that was and the sources of the product. And what was particularly pertinent with the chocolate story is that you can say, well, many people say, well, I would never be involved in having sex with someone who's been trafficked anyway. And, and I understand that, but we all eat chocolate. No, it, it, it's how the story touches everybody's everyday life. They're the ones that stand out because there you can make a difference. Insist on that. You know, we weren't the first on this. There are many groups who've done fantastic work who continue to do a lot more work than we do. Um, and I would never in any way want to overplay our role in it, but we can shine the light on the work that they do and we can shine the light on this problem. Um, it's one of the things that CNN can do uniquely and we're very proud to continue to do it. So has any progress been made? Well, it's... It's always tempting to say no because the situation has gotten worse and the crime levels have gotten worse and where there's, you know, the opportunity to make money in this, then people will always be taking that opportunity. But certainly it has. I mean, I think, you know, you've seen the Pope speak out about this. You've seen President Obama speaking out about this, directing all the U.S. ambassadors to become involved in this project. Um, we've seen small isolating examples of stories that we've done where we've, we've featured this and we've gone back and it's gone away. Um, small victories, the cocoa agreement, the, the, the chocolate companies are making more effort to sign up to that. But the more, the more you draw attention to it, the more you give people incentive to steer away from it. You do not, if you're a big multinational company, want to inadvertently, and most of it is completely inadvertent, inadvertently find yourself caught up in CNN's coverage of the Freedom Project and slave labor. You're going to make a real effort to make sure you, you avoid that. Tony Meadows, thank you very much. Thank Looking you, Robin. Looking forward to all of our coverage. Cheers, thank Thanks you.